What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I am presenting my World Championships 2022 tier list of archetypes, and uh, we'll take a look at my tier list, and I'll talk about why it looks the way it does, what I expect to do well at Worlds, uh, some of the factors that go into it, like popularity of decks and uh, stigma around decks and player, um, how the players receive each deck and how they understand the metagame to develop so the differing players differing regions and groups of players definitely have a lot of uh influence on which decks actually get played what decks they bring and what decks they are trying to beat so we'll try to talk about a little bit of all of that today uh, before we do, shout out to my sponsors, PotownStore.com, the best place to get PTCGO codes, Dragon Shield Sleeves, CarTrooperGames.com, Beast Coast Pokemon, and PokemonCard.io. You can find links, affiliate links, and coupon codes for all of that in the description down below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. My top three picks for worlds. That video will be out tomorrow, but on Beast Coast Pokemon, not on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to Beast Coast Pokemon. That is in the description down below. So here's my tier list. I'm not going to make you guys sit through me making the tier list. I I took a, a good amount of time prior to recording this video to make this exactly how I wanted it to be. Let me explain the tiers real quick. Rogue slash bad slash etc. Most of these decks are here because I don't expect anybody to play them, so they can't do well if nobody plays them. Um, and if decks are down here, not selected for anything, it means that there was overlap, or I don't know what the deck is. Essentially, all of these have overlap, and they're already being represented by something else up here in the main tier list. Uh, but Rogue, Bad, etc., most of these decks aren't unplayable. Maybe like Arceus, Pikachu, V, Union, and whatever the heck this is. Um, are unplayable, but most of these are just like very underrepresented, um, under tested, or they have something that's outclassing them. Like Arceus Ice Rider, don't play that when you can play Ice Rider Palkia, right? Um, Darkrai with these wheezings just seems like a meme. Like just play Turbo Darkrai. That's a choice up here in tier three. Um, but then we also have like things like Zorark Box with Wormadam. That's a playable deck, just nobody's really playing it. Tier 3, these decks are playable. I think each of them could get a couple people playing them at Worlds, but I don't expect to actually see them at top 32 or higher. Um, I think it's just ignorant to say these decks have no reason to be played, right? Like, Stone Journer and Drag Assault, they do similar things. They just uh, create this wall of a Pokemon that uh, continuously heals and can shut out the top two decks, Palkia and Arceus. Um, so I think it's really ignorant to say these decks like just don't exist. Like obviously they do, and they're playable for a reason. Um, Mewtwo V Star variants. I've seen some some okay placements on online events with them, and they're good enough to for me to say that I think they're playable. But I don't think they're going to succeed as in top thirty two or higher if people do play them. Arceus Charizard's been a weird one all format because uh, I think it was really underrated for the brilliant stars format and also for some of the astral radiance format i think it's just very underrated um so those that's the kind of idea of decks that are in tier three playable but not expected the top 32 or higher uh tier two these are the decks that i won't be surprised if i see them in the top 32 or top 16 we have inteleon counter box we have arceus flying pikachu arceus mewtwo v union arceus tapu coco um, Arceus Jolteon variants. I wouldn't expect to see both of these. I don't think there will be enough. I would expect to see Gyarados or Malamar. If I had a pick, I think Gyarados is better. Um, so that's an idea of what's in tier two. Tier one, these are the decks I expect to see in top eight. Mew V Max and Mew 2 V Union Control. Now the caveat is Mew 2 V Union Control, I think will be like an eighth as popular as Mew V Max, maybe even less, maybe like for every 20 Mew V Maxes, there's one Mew v, there's one uh, Mew 2 control. So I think it's going to be much harder for this to get up there because I think it'll be way less represented than this is. Um, and then the top two decks, the decks to beat, are Palkia and Teleon and Arceus and Teleon. I think those are the decks to beat. I think they will be the two most popular, and I think they will be the two most successful um, as long as there aren't, like, 
mass groups of people bringing like perfect counters to these two decks which is possible i think these will be the two top performers and two things that people are expecting to play against the most as well so let's talk about each uh palky and Teleon and arceus and Teleon. palky and Teleon has raw power and also very good consistency from the beginning of the game whereas arceus can struggle with the turn one consistency but it can secure games past turn two as long as it's set up in a way that other decks can't really with big charm plus charon's care and shady dealings always getting you the cards you need to complete the chains of healing and attacking healing and attacking sometimes bossing up the weaker targets to finish off the game so these two have very consistent strategies they have um they're both very powerful. Their V-Star powers are insane. Palkia's V-Star power pops three energies onto the board, and Arceus searches your deck for any two cards you want. And then Trinity Nova accelerates three energy onto the board. So uh, very similar in that regard, and they both use the most consistent evolution support engine in the game, which is the Drizzle and Teleon Shady Dealings engine. I expect them both to be popular and successful. Mu V Max is the most aggressive deck in the format. It can start taking knockouts on turn one going second. And uh, it feels like you always get to play the game with Mu V Max if there's not a path to the peak in play. And then sometimes you even get to play when there's a path to the peak in play because you have a stadium or a pump kaboo. So very good deck. Um, I don't expect it to win the event. Mewtwo V Union Control, it's frustrating to play against. It's very, very good. Um, it can wall out things with Mill Tank, or it can wall out things with the Mewtwo V Union's excessive healing. Um, it's a very calculated deck where you have to make, uh, I believe you have to make very specific decisions, and you can really ruin the chances of winning a game with decisions you make early on. Um, if you expend a resource that you shouldn't have or you select the wrong card with a search card, um, you send up the wrong Pokemon when the active is knocked out. It's just these small things that other decks might be able to come back from with a very um, calculated deck like a control deck like this. I feel like these decisions have way more weight in them than other decks might. Uh, so it takes a very strong player uh both with fundamental skills and mental uh stability over the course of a day uh to play this deck tier two uh there's a lot in tier two because i think there's a lot of viable playable decks Inteleon counter box very very difficult deck to play i'm not sure if the payoff is as much as mewtwo v union control but they're both very hard to play um, but this is, uh, this is going to be taking KOs and knockouts, and I think Slowbro should probably be in this deck. Slowbro from Pokemon Go, of course. Um, I hope, okay, yeah, I was, I was starting to worry. I was like, wait, did, is Regigigas not on this tier list? It is, so we'll get there. I don't know why I just had that random thought, like, crap, is Regigigas here? Um, uh, Mewtwo V Union with Arceus V Star. This is a deck that's performing well online. I think it's strong for reasons uh, like, you know, for it's strong for the reasons that Mewtwo V Union is strong for. This is essentially like Arceus Duraludon V Max, where Arceus is just a catalyst for Duraludon. It's the same thing here with Mewtwo V Union. Mewtwo V Union has three broken attacks. It can hit 16 damage counters wherever it wants. It can heal 200 health from itself or it can pop you for 300 damage. Um, so this is a powerful deck but it's very one tracked um it's a little worse now that people know what it is but um it's it feels even to slightly favored versus the top three decks being palkia arceus mew um yeah i think i i think i'm comfortable saying it feels even to slightly favored versus the top three decks uh, but it has consistency issues that come with being a mute being a V Union deck. So maybe those are actually slightly unfavored to even once you take in those consistency issues. Next is Arceus Tapu Koko V Max. Um, it's just good because Tapu Koko is very strong against Palkia. And then you can use Path to the Peak for Mew. And then you try to somehow win a war of attrition <laughs> against Arceus and Teleon, which is quite hard. Um Arceus, Jolteon, either variant, Gyarados, or Malamar. Uh, if you set up the Jolteon memory capsule and they don't have bosses, orders, or cross switches, the top two decks struggle very hard against that because they can't use their shady dealings. But if they can just gust up the Jolteon and knock it out, you become a just a bad deck. 
Like, that's my problem with these decks. If they can knock out your Jolteon, you become a bad deck. And if you can't, if they knock out your Jolteon and you can't reestablish it reasonably within that game, you just become a bad deck, in my opinion. Um, against Mew, you don't need Jolteon. In this version, you play Path to the... Well, you play Path to the Peak in both, but in this version, your hope against Mew is Path to the Peak at Gyarados. And then in this version, with Malamar VMAX, Malamar VMAX is pretty good against Mew. It's also good against Mew 2v Union because of weakness. Uh, Arceus Duraludon VMAX uh, is good. It's one tracked, just like Arceus Mew 2 v Union. They're very similar. That It's just like... Arceus is your catalyst, and then you're just trying to set up a couple Duraldon V Maxes. Um, it, it's like a very down the middle kind of deck for me. It's not like something I'm excited to play, uh, or that I'm really, really rooting for. But I do think it's a good enough deck to be in tier two. Um, next is Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. I honestly, I think this is a very good play for the tournament if a player is confident in their list and their ability to pilot this deck because Dunsparce and Manaphy have been pretty non-existent from Arceus decks and I expect it to continue that way. You have dark Pokemon to answer the Mewtwo V Union decks and Mew V Max. The real problem for Urshifu is dealing with Palkia's aggressiveness and their stability with Manaphy and even through the counters that you might put into your deck. This is just a raw power deck, Palkia V-Star, and I... Uh, even with counters in your deck like Zara or Raikou V, you can still struggle with this deck because they hit hard and they hit often and they hit early. So uh, Urshifu's issue really is Palkia and then some of the rogue decks like Duraldon VMAX, uh, Stone Journer, those kinds of things. So I think Urshifu could do well at this event. And I think a lot of people are thinking that it's just, can you get through the field of rogue decks and Palkia um, and can you handle Palkia? If you've, if you've found a way to handle Palkia, then this deck is very, very good. Um, or handle it consistently and comfortably, I should say. Uh, Regigigas, um, it should just be Arceus, Palkia, and Mew. So if you have a deck that's beating the top three decks, that seems pretty darn good. Um, but I'm not so sure it's that cut and dry. I expect to see Regigigas get people through day one but I don't think it's a good enough deck to play in day two as of now. That's my opinion. Uh, Dialga V-Star is aggressive when it's uh, setting up consistently, but it also feels like a deck that gets very awkward draws at some points, which I talked about that in my top 10 decks video recently. Um, Dialga V-Star is fine. Wouldn't be a deck that I would even consider playing to the event, but I can see it getting a placement. Uh, Blissey Milk, definitely can see this getting a placement, especially depending on which is better for the day. Is it better to build more towards Blissey with extra healing, or is it better to build with extra mill tanks to wall out the people that aren't preparing for it anymore? Because if you'll remember, there was a time when Arceus and, and Palkia and Teleon were putting tool jabbers in their deck. <sighs> Excuse me, to deal with a toughness caped mill tank, if they were putting extra Inteleons or they were putting Nessa to get back their single prize attackers to deal a mill tank. And that's why mill tank faded out and it became more of a Blissey deck. But now it could just become a more of a mill tank deck again. And you can focus really, really focus in on mill tank if these decks can't handle it. So I can see this deck in some capacity doing well. Uh, this represents all Ice Rider builds. There's more Ice Rider builds down here, I think, but this just represents all of them. Uh, Ice Rider, I mean, if it if it's hidden its combo pieces and it's one-shotting V-Stars, Palkia and Arceus don't stand a chance. Um, it's not as well equipped to take care of the entire meta, but it is very, very targeted at the top two, which is why I expect it to see it. I expect to see it do well because it's targeting those top two decks very hard. Um, and then lastly is Arceus Flying, Pikachu, Crobat VMAX, Path of the Peak, etc., which Azul won NAIC with. Still a good deck. Um, I think it overperformed at NAIC, though. And then Tier 3 playable, but not expected to succeed. Um, 
you know, it's these are decks that make sense. Some, most of them, I'd say, like Gengar V Max can hit 280 just like Ice Rider can. Gengar V Max again, um, Arceus and Telling on Flying Pikachu Beedrill. We've seen these combinations of cards throughout the tier list. This is all of them together. I think it's too much going on and too inconsistent to put on the line for worlds. Arceus Charizard, I just don't think is going to get played, but I think it's playable. Uh, Rapid Strike and Telling on V Max, I don't have many thoughts about, but I don't think it deserves to be in rogue slash bad uh the mewtwo v star decks i do think are playable but very under experimented with um palkia biberal like turbo palkia i think it's still playable but it's just so outclassed by palkia and teleon at this point in my opinion uh turbo dark playable would i play it absolutely not samurott v star i think is very very interesting and i'd love to see something come out with samurott v star at the world championships because i do think this core is playable um but i'm not expecting it to succeed because i haven't seen any proof that people will be bringing something like that to worlds and then dracus and stone Journey i did talk about earlier on so that is my world championships tier list and like i said tune into beast coast pokemon tomorrow i'll break down my top three plays for worlds and why that is thank you guys so much for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time here on celio's network